Hey, it's Horsehead, Star Wars Dork, ready to do a Star Wars Dork build. Alright, spoiler alert, it's a pair of claws based off of Laura from Logan, along with a foot claw she uses in the movie. So, let's get ready to build. Let me tell you what you're going to need. First off, I'm going with craft uh, foam. I like to use foam, craft foam, EVA foam, foam floor mats. Uh, makes the build nice and light and simple. And you can do a lot of things with foam. First off, I have two different thicknesses of foam. I have some 2 millimeter thin craft foam and maybe 6 millimeter medium thickness foam. Both you can buy in sheets. So, craft foam, two different thicknesses. Uh, I didn't want to go with double this thickness because it is a little too thick that way and also what uh, I end up doing later on uh, needs the thickness of this foam in order to uh, fold the metal armature that's going to fit inside. Alright, also you're going to need a medium gauge metal, uh, not real flimsy, thin, uh, light metal. You want it to be fairly sturdy. Uh, so I like to go with the uh, coat hanger. So these are from the dry cleaner and they come with this cardboard tube and it covers up this uh, end here so it's not a complete hanger like you see most of the time. But if you have those, you can use them as well. This I just find is a little more convenient. requires less cutting. And it's got some bends in it that I can use already uh, to facilitate the uh, handle element of the claws. All right, besides the hanger and your craft foam, you're gonna wanna have uh, some Plasti Dip or some kind of uh, sealant for your foam. I like to use Plasti Dip, it's simple, it's easy. A uh, couple of layers of this and it's good to go and ready to paint. Speaking of paint, I have some uh, simple Rust-Oleum metallic finish. Uh, spray can, red can. So also a can of red, maybe for some blood splatter. And when spraying your paint or Plasti Dip, make sure you do that in a well ventilated area. You'll also need eighth inch screws that are about two inches long and the corresponding bolts and washers. So for the handle, I got one of these ferrule and stop sets which is designed for looping cable, I guess. <laughs> Anyways, it just looked cool. It had the right shape. If I was cooler and was able to 3D print something like this, I may have done that. But these are aluminum and they have the right kind of grip shape and they were cheap, buck fifty or something. So besides your supplies here, you'll need a few tools and in this case a template. I found a uh, template online for some Logan claws and I modified it. So I took one of the single claws and since it's for a smaller character and this was for a girl to use I broke that claw down to about this size here you can see so I took off maybe an inch, inch and a half uh, maybe an inch of uh, claw and I also worked out a little bit of the idea of how the wire would come out of the foam itself here to the handle type piece. So there I have that and from there I made a template and uh, laid out my negative space for my trenching later on. Also you're going to want to have a sharpie. You can use a ballpoint pen as well but I find a sharpie works a little bit better. Uh, nice sharp blade. 
ideally with a blade sharpener keep this blade nice and sharp and you want to use it as, as low of an angle as possible for your cleaner cuts so having a nice sharp blade and a fairly long blade makes that a lot easier when you're doing cutting of uh, thicker foam especially but you get a nice clean cut it's easier to do um, so working with the hanger or some kind of wire you're going to want a pair of snips of some sort cut it and a pair of uh, pliers in this case needle nose to bend the tip over and to do uh, some of the other bends both before and after gluing it up you're going to want to use some contact cement I use barge cement this stuff is very very potent so be sure to use it in a well ventilated area I always have a fan blowing behind me which I'm sure you can hear all too well in this video speaking of glue you can also want to use some hot glue uh, they both serve different purposes so it's always good to have both options available for different types of gluing speed as well sometimes you want to do it with uh, a little bit faster so you'll do it with hot glue as opposed to barge just because you can put the glue down uh, hit it with some compressed air cool it off and it's uh, good to go whereas barge takes a while to dry sometimes you have to do multiple layers so it's a little slower and you'll also want a rotary tool and you'll want a nice cutting mat and if you have a heat gun or a torch those will come in handy too the next step is to take some of this uh, sort of medium craft foam six millimeter I think and <clears throat> transfer this pattern onto there four times for two pair of lovely claws. So I'm going to transfer this guy to this foam here, but it's a thin piece of paper. It's a little hard to handle. So I have some uh, straight pins here, some T pins. And I'm going to sort of secure this. Uh, piece of paper to the foam while I draw the, or trace around it so it makes it keep it from slipping catch the other edge here and like I said I created this negative space here on the inside to show where the wire armature would go or whatever the support and that's uh, right there so I've basically laid out one of the four claws and also have the place that I'm going to sort of create a trench I'll complete these lines here sort of roughly and that way I can come back with a uh, soldering iron or a wood burner and put in a little trench along here that will then accept a piece of wire here something like that into the trench and it'll have a place to re be recessed and then when I come through with my uh, thin craft foam layered on top there won't be any bulge or odd uh, surface problems that I'll have to deal with to make things a little bit easier always put uh, pins back into the pin cushion as it were not as cool as Evil Ted I just have a piece of foam with my pins in it <laughs> pins are great for holding the pattern down and so here we go I'm going to put this guy on here just barely it looks like I can fudge on this side because I know I'm going to cut that down later but I'll try to get as much of it on there as possible and again Tacking down uh, the pattern. Okay, catch this 
that trench line, no trenching of this thin foam, and there we're good for now. I'm going to create three more of these and three more of those, and I'll be ready to have a new set of claws to put together and seal and paint. So next step, cutting stuff out. Nice sharp blade. My Extendoid blade and my knife sharpener. Nice blade, kind of travel through this foam a little bit easier. So let's see what we can do here. I keep the blade at a 90 degree angle so I don't create any extra work for myself. And what do we do? One more pass just to make sure. Got to make sure you keep as consistent as you can so you can create a weird double cut and there it goes so it's a nice clean edge and pretty square good to go oh before I cut this all the way out I think it's a better idea if I catch it with the soldering iron before that that way I have a little bit better surface to work with a little, little more stable. So we got the iron heated up so we're ready to burn a bit of a trench through this guy and that'll be a place for the wire armature to live here in this half of the foam claw. Also one thing I did you can notice it's cut there I had taken the blade and sort of cut along that line I had drawn to give me an easier path to follow with the tip of the soldering iron. Alright, so I'm ready to cut out. I got the uh, pieces laid out and trenched out, ready to take the wire. So the next step is to cut out this guy right here. Leave a little overhang down at the end. Oops, oh, a sticker on the back. I didn't <laughs> realize where I'd laid out that blade. All right, so I got my pieces ready to go. Cut out the uh, piece to go on top here to hide the blade. And I will glue everything up. Sure you cut out your covering piece. And uh, that's basically a pair of claws. And then you have this fun little piece. Who knows what to do with that? I don't know. Next step is to get this guy to be the right kind of shape to fit in that trench that I created. Geared on this uh, lovely claw and I want to bend over this end so I don't have any dangerous sharp ends hidden underneath this foam. I want it to be rounded. That way in case something crazy happens there's nothing that will impale the kid on it. The next step is to bend over these lovely little ends. Make a nice little nubbin. There we go. So, now that's nice and uh, safe. It's not going to impale somebody too easily unless it really got crazy. Put that guy to sit right there, follow this, and bend it again. So, we got that and that. Nice little fit. Next step is to hot glue this in place. 
then glue this guy on top to cover the ugly and then once these are uh, glued together and this is secure and not moving around all crazy like and I can cut this piece out and give it a little curve with the uh, Dremel tool I put a blade edge so to speak on uh, the front here and smooth everything out and even it up and it looked lovely and you'll never know what it was once it's painted all right I got the hot glue gun out and uh, I'm heating it up next step is to get this guy hot glued in and go from there So, want another layer of hot glue just to give it a little bit of more here, just to give it a little bit more of a connection and smooth out the pieces. I want a bumpy surface. Let's keep that connection nice and smooth. Let that cool down for a minute, and then I will barge up both of these surfaces and stick these two together, lay out my blade lines and do some dremeling. Next step, barge it up, contact cement, and I'm going to give it a nice coating here. Ooh, I'm slinging shit, holy crap. And so, since this is going on like that, I'll do this back side. Alright. Do 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 but I'm not good at it, yeah. Next step is to stick these lovely babies together in a manner that will allow them to reside as one. As long as it was roughly in the right spot, I'm good to go. Just want to make sure I don't do any curling of anything. Don't want to cause any weird shape misshapen this but there you go nice stable claw wire configuration now I just have to lay out some blade lines center line because that's obviously off center another blade line and then cut this out and smooth everything down I'll then have a nice claw that will then have to have the wire altered and, and uh, adjusted to fit in the hand properly and attached to a nice little piece of hardware here I have and some way or another it will be the hand piece and then this will obviously be shorter and or bent and it will fit together lovely. So, the next step is to do a little dremeling and get that blade kind of look going there. 
can see it takes off more of the yellow than it does of the white obviously because it's a thicker piece the next step is to modify the wire and it will be a nice little claw type thing two of them that's what this is for to hold in between the two so I got all the bits built and pieces carved and then I painted them took a little bit of some silver on the dry brush and I did some edge effects to give it a little bit of a kind of contrast there you can kind of see. Then I bent the, the wire coming out of each one to allow for better gripping and then I connected them both to a handle type piece, some odd pieces of hardware I got from Home Depot, and a screw and some nuts and washers, and that way it can be adjusted this way if it needs to be, and then these can always be adjusted slightly if they need to be bent uh, one way or the other. Two pair of claws ready for X23 to get all loco with. They're nice and soft and bendy. And my next step, I think, is going to throw some red paint on them. A little splatter of some red just to make them look a little more vicious. And uh, then they'll be good to go. So. Got a nice deco on each one. Bent the uh, wires here so they'll hold it in the right position and a nice little weighted handle. And I think they're good to go. Both of them have uh, some blood splatter. I think that's a good effect. Once she gets them on and can get a little uh, makeup in the between the knuckles area there and uh, make them look more realistic, sell the whole thing. And you even have a foot claw so she can put it on her shoe and like she kick some ass, literally. So, X23 claws, difference is there's only two. Comes out between the knuckles here instead of all three. And uh, that's a wrap. That was easy.